Good morning, Monday morning in May. Uh, I just really feel to share a word from the Lord today with uh, whoever's listening. Just um, main theme that the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me has to do with um, exposure, exposure. It has a lot to do with the cleansing and the uh, purging that's been going on in our lives, the exposure of darkness, the exposure of addictions, the exposure of motives, the exposure of um, just areas of our life that have been messed up, areas that we've made a mess of, areas that we have lied about. No shame, no shame. Areas that we have been fake about, areas that we have portrayed a certain image, or maybe we were deceived, maybe we were um, boastful. Big, big, big in that area. I believe God is getting into that area, areas that we have um, covered up. You know, the Bible says, whatever concealed will be revealed whatever has been covered up will be exposed all that is hidden will be revealed and this is that hour i believe that there's going to be a great humbling in the exposure um and i'm not talking about the grand events of the world whether or not exposure happens in the world whether it's real or false because i don't I don't even know what I believe anymore because of the matrix is so overlaid with lies that I don't believe a lot of what we're seeing on television or in, in social media or on the computer is even real. Like when they say Biden is flown to China or, you know, Xi from China has flown to Russia and has is having a meeting with Putin. I don't even think they're meeting. I think it's fake videos that they actually make. I think just about every article that you don't even hear a person speaking, but they just say that, you know, you know, Biden has said this, this, and this, and we don't even see him saying it. I don't even think that's real. I think that's all AI. I think most of our reality right now is being coordinated by a very, very complex, multifaceted quantum AI. And we are entering into that quantum reality which isn't real and so i do believe that most videos are not real um probably the majority of them look into it um we know you know there's a large awakening about space and that there truly is a firmament which is spoken about on the first page of the holy bible the bible is a It really is a book of revelation. It's a book, it's a multidimensional text of secrets and um, journey of the soul about God, about the soul, about the spiritual realms, about the world and about the earth, about the universe, our atmosphere. First page of the Bible firmament. I, you know, I've talked about this before. We did not land on the moon. Are we all really existing inside of God, the God molecule, you know? Um, Look at flight plans. They never, ever go from north to south. We go east to west all the time, right? But we never go north to south. Never fly over the South Pole, never fly over the North Pole. Why is that? Something is amiss. And whatever is has been concealed is going to be revealed and just getting back to our personal lives especially areas that we have gotten very caught up in our ego boastful proud um you know when we have something real we don't have to boast about it say we have a really good marriage you know i'm just using that as an example because We see a lot of things on Facebook and on social media. People post, you know, pictures of themselves with their spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend or and want so badly for people to know, like, I have this great life or I have this great relationship or I am, you know, the trophy wife or the trophy husband or, you know, we are just so amazing together or look at how beautiful we are. And this is just the nature of the ego. It's the nature of of the self. There's no shame 
And I'm just going to keep saying that there's no shame in it because it really all is rooted in false image, our false image based outside of God, because when we're inside of our image in God, we are so at peace. Nothing matters. Nobody matters. We don't have to prove anything because we can't prove anything. And that's when we get the revelation that we can't prove anything because nothing we have can be exalted outside of God. But all that is in God can be exalted because it's real and it is God. And that's why God is exalted above all. And God inside of us is exalted. That is glory. That's what that's called. That's why the Bible says these temples were supposed to bring glory to God. How do we do that? We can't do it through the ego, but we have to go through the ego, the door of the ego, to come through darkness, to realize the truth so that we may come to the knowledge of Christ in us, to the knowledge of God where this temple glorifies God, the God in us, the name that is above every other name. And that's where God is exalted through us. And that's where God is glorified through us. What is glory? Glory is radiance. It is a reflection of God. It is um, power. It is the power of God radiating out of us. It is, it's electric. It's, um, it's beauty. It's the glory of God. And um, this, you know, the, the hiddenness of that truth is that we must go through our darkness in order to come through that narrow path into glory, just like we see Jesus walking the path of suffering to the cross, laying down the life, and then being glorified on the other side of death to resurrection. But this next part, I believe, of coming into the glory of God is going to be about the humbling that's associated with reveal. And all the things that we've, you know, portrayed whether or not we did that unknowingly or knowingly or with hidden motives or whatever things that weren't true God is saying like I have to clean house because I can't let you keep this I can't let you keep this falseness I can't let you keep this pride I can't let you keep this false reality that you portray to others or that you um, thought that you had I have to give you what's real in me And I got to break down and I've been breaking down that falseness. And so I must rebalance what is true and what is false and whatever is true will remain. And that is, that is a, whatever is false is going to fall away. It's going to be exposed. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be uncovered. It's going to be disclosed. Whatever is false is going to be disclosed And whatever is true will remain because it's from God. And the the humbling in that will be powerful. And I also believe gentle. I'm feeling a real sense of the gentleness of God because such powerful things are happening right now in the spirit and in the world such abrupt, powerful, revolutionary things are happening. God is coming in with the polarity of that, and that is gentleness, gentleness. And the gentleness of the spirit is going to manifest in such a way that it will bring us out through a humbling and will help to deliver us. If we respond to it, yesterday, this whole weekend was just such a monumental time for me. My husband and I spent the time together and the first day we spent, um, we had to rent a car. It was actually free because there was a recall on my husband's truck and they told him pick any car on the lot. And he took a, a, a convertible Mustang and he knows I was wanted, you know, always like them. So Saturday we went on the tail of the dragon, which happens to be a, um, It's got like 310 turns on this mountain. Um, And it's known for like all the motorcycles and the racing cars that go on there. And he's like, you know, get in the car. We're going to go. We're going to go on the tail of the dragon. You know, and the dragon signifies the ego. That's what it is. You know, we like to blame a lot of things on Satan. But who is Satan? Who is Lucifer? But false light. Who is the dragon? But the ego. 
the monster of the ego inside of us. And I just felt it was such a prophetic um, manifestation of, um, and so I, we put the top down and I, you know, I, I drove the tail of the dragon on Saturday um, and it was phenomenal. And I just, I was doing breathing while I was driving very intentional breathing, but it was almost involuntary at the same time because I felt like I was getting a cleansing and I could feel the toxins from the bottom of my lungs clearing out breath and toxicity and carbon dioxide and toxins that were, I think, resident in the bottom of my lungs for probably at least a year, maybe more, maybe many years. And I, I, could, I was just doing this all day while I was driving driving that tail of the dragon and just thinking about the ego, thinking about the dragon. Um, it's easier to blame things on Satan, who we would call the dragon. It's easier to blame things on the devil. It's easier to blame things on darkness because it's a blame. And that brings us back to the garden where we lost our innocence. Because whenever we are blaming, we are not in innocence. When we take responsibility of the darkness in us through the ego, which there's no shame and there's no judgment, there is only freedom. Once we admit and we humble, we humble down and we allow God. And I just drove the tail of the dragon and, it, and it's gorgeous. It is actually one of the most beautiful places. It's, it's, you're going through the mountains, there's trees, there's, there's rock, there's landscape. It's, it's, it's amazing. It goes from Tennessee to North Carolina in the Smoky Mountains. And it was such a picture of the beauty that we find as we go through that narrow place and those turns and those, you know, hairpin turns of our lives through the dragon of our ego. But there's beauty all along the way, cleansing us, detoxifying us. And I just breathe like that all day. And I literally feel like my lung capacity opened. I feel like I, I got rid of and excreted out so much toxicity that was resident inside of me. And it was prayer. It really was prayer. And, and with the top down, like the energies were just clearing and the wind was blowing. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And my husband had a big smile on his face because he just, he loves to make me happy. And I had a big smile on my face the whole day, just I just, it was just amazing. And then Sunday morning yesterday, just beautiful private things happening with my husband and me and just God breaking curses and manifesting things that even in the hard times and even in the difficult times and even in the uncertainties and the times of real testing of faith, not knowing what the future is going to hold, all these beautiful things happening. And then we went to another part of the mountains yesterday and I'm sitting on a rock and there's at least a hundred butterflies just flying around me, just gently. And there's a creek and you can just hear the water of the creek or the river, you know, it breaks down into a creek in this area by the mountains and just butterflies and butterflies and butterflies. And maybe you guys have seen butterflies this weekend, but hundreds of them. My husband even took a video behind me and it was just, I was watching and it was just, I knew that was the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is just such a beautiful, beautiful power, friend, confidant, counselor, comforter, um, worker in our lives and comes in in so many manifold ways to, to deliver us, to cleanse us, to bring us into the truth, to disclose what must be disclosed in our lives. And one of the things the Holy Spirit, he's the helper. The Holy Spirit is called helper. And this is the message I'm finally getting to. And my husband and I just had such a connection this weekend. And, and it was very private, so I'm not going to share it. But God is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying to us, I'm going to allow a disclosure and a humbling in your life that is going to cause you to ask for help. To ask for help. Because asking for help it has to do with relationship with other people. Asking God for help is one thing, but through God, we are going to ask for help from others. And we're going to admit, I don't have it all together. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm not sure. And look at this mess 
I'm, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do it. I don't know, you know, and coming to Tennessee, having this new job, even though I've been a nurse for 30 years, I've had to ask a lot of questions. I've had to ask for help. I've had to ask for direction. Um, and it's humbling and it's okay. And to not do that and to just stand in secrecy and pride and try to act like I know what I'm doing is only going to prolong the journey because it's living in a lie. And God is just saying right now, this is the message of the hour. Ask for help. Admit that you don't know it all. Admit that you really have had blinders on. You really have been blinded in your ego. You really don't know. And you've maybe been living this type of life for this long. And you have no idea how to live the life that's ahead of you. And you need others who have done it to help you. Living in Tennessee, we're reaching out to different people um, because we've never lived this way before. Um, The world is entering into a place that we've all never been. So we God is going to lead us to seek out wisdom, especially in our personal lives. This is the message in our personal lives. If we are too proud to reach out and say, I need help. I need help. I I don't know how to do this. Um, It's it's continuing to stand in the ego, in darkness and in deception. So God is bringing a humbling right now where we're, we're going to reach out for help. And it's going to bring a rebalancing in our, in our soul, in our perceptions. Um, we have to, we have to be humbled in this way. That's all I know that God is saying we must be humbled in this way. So um, the narcissism in us that will not reach out for help must be broken. It must be exposed and it must be broken and it must um God wants to have his way in us for our own good. And there's no shame. There's no judgment on that. Just there's truth. There's just truth. And there's just deliverance. And there's just love. And there's just peace, joy in the kingdom ahead of us. If we will accept that humbling. I don't know how to do this. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to hide the fact that I don't know how to do this. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to humble myself before others and before God and ask for help so that I can learn, so that I can watch others, so that I can grow and I can be humbled in this process. So, um, and I felt like that dynamic happened between my husband and me this weekend and it was beautiful, it was powerful and, um, and God is going to increase this synergy amongst humanity right now where we, We'll have to reach out for help. I think it's going to come on a more macro scale due to whatever is going to happen in the world financially and in other ways. We're going to have to reach out for help. Um, But I also believe on a personal levels, uh, the more we are humbled in that way and allow it, the more powerful the deliverance and the kingdom will be able to be given to us. It's just a spiritual law. The more we will allow ourselves to be humbled and say, I need help. Can you teach me? Can you show me? Um, I have no idea like how to do this. And I'm, I'm just, I make a mess of things. I'm making a mess of things because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, the more we're able to humble ourselves in that respect, the more powerfully God will give us the kingdom because it's a spiritual law. Humility is the most, I believe, the most powerful law that releases the power of the Holy Spirit, that releases the power of heaven to be unlocked to us. And if we look into that through faith, we can understand why. We can understand why. It's it's just makes so much sense. So, and the opposite is true. So the more prideful and the more we cover up and the more we fake and the more that we will not ask for help and not admit that we don't know what we're doing, the more we are gonna stay in bondage the more we're going to be staying outside the kingdom, the more that we are going to venture through circles of darkness and cycles of dysfunction and toxicity and pain and blame and deception. So what a beautiful law, what a beautiful spiritual law. Um, God's spiritual laws are so perfect 
the word tells us that. Read Psalm 119. It is powerful. The law of the Lord is perfect, enduring forever. Amen. We have this promise, the promise of the kingdom, for our Father longs and loves to give us the kingdom. May God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us through grace to humble ourselves in this coming season. And it's the gentleness of God, the gentleness that will show us the way. While God does revolutionary things,